I'm Amy, and I'm not. I'm the mole. I'm Garrett, and I'm the mole. I'm Anna, and I'm the mole. I'm Brenna, and I'm the mole. I am Skylar, and I am the mole. I'm Julia, and I'm the mole. My name's Eric, I'm the mole. I'm Kelsey, and I'm the mole. I'm Jamie, and I'm the mole. I'm Jade, and I'm the mole. I'm Mandy, and I'm the mole. I'm Colin, and I am the mole. Last time on Montana Mole 4, Julia became the mole's third victim, leaving a few players confident, but leaving the majority concerned. I was actually pretty positive I was gone that round, because I mixed my ballot, and I was the last one done. So I'm really glad I'm not gone, but I'm really surprised that I'm not gone, so maybe one of my guesses was kind of on. Not surprised at all, in the least. Tell the truth. Then I found out that she thought it was someone else, so I'm not so nervous anymore. I guess I would be shocked. At first I thought it was her, but then I kind of steered away from that. I makes to feel better that I never ever suspected her because Jade was trying to convince me that it was her, which kind of, which was what made me suspect, because I knew it wasn't her, and it made me suspect that like he was trying to mislead me. So I'm really glad that that's not even an option anymore. I'm really sad I love Julia, and um, I'm kind of also a little bit worried because she thought it was the same person that all of us thought it was. So unless she was just saying that, and she was actually going for someone else, I'm kind of getting worried because she might have been wrong. <laughs> it honestly kind of makes me a little nervous because I think she may have voted the same way I did. But now I'm going, did she vote with us last minute or did she go with someone else? So she went with someone else and I'm still in. But if she went like, with us and then she gets out, then that means I could be out next. Luckily I'm quick. I don't know. I'm sad. That's it. Kind of more in the dark than ever. I don't really know what's going on. See the other one? This is Amy's head. I guess I'll, I'll kind of have to hope that I'm still on the right trail and that she just kind of went off in her own direction. You need to divide yourself into two groups of four. One group that is good at counting under pressure oh. and one group who are pretty good fibbers. Fibber. I can lie. I can lie. Let's do four, li four liars at this end, four counters on that end. Okay. <laughs> what am I? Your counter. I don't care. My counter? You two are the only two that's here. Your counter, counter, counter. I can do either. Whatever you want. Okay, I'll so line up. Here and be director. Are the fibbers? You will be telling stories. The three of you. Now you need to decide amongst the three of you which one who's going to tell a fake story. Two of you are going to tell real stories. One's like going to be herself. fake about something that you've experienced, something that's happened. Now, Colin, by choosing this seat. You get the chance Shoot. for an exemption. Oh. Shoot. These nice. four are gonna tell these three are gonna tell their stories. Okay. If you can correctly identify which one of them is lying, you earn yourself an exemption. If they can fool you, four dollars will be added to the pot. Oh. Okay, so are we gonna let so does he get the pick or do, do, do does he pick who goes first though or do do we? I don't think it matters. Well it might, because I mean if he picks the liar first, then the liar has to just go with it and the other two have to go off the liar. That's true. Okay, you each have prepared a story to tell Colin, and if he can guess it correctly, he'll win himself an exemption. I'm guessing the one that's false? Yes, if you guys can fool him, $4 will go into the pot. So, let's begin. Go ahead, Garrett. All right, so my cousins and I and my brother were all walking to Rose Park one day from my house. We get down there and we are just kind of like playing around down there, and then we, on the way back, we took Avenue D. Walk along, right? And all of a sudden, these two guys go at their house and start screaming at us for no reason. Like, we were just walking down the street and stuff, and they were hot on our tails. And then we finally got back to my house, and they, like, they walked away. But we got chased all the way from, like, four blocks down by these two guys for, like, no reason. We got chased all the way back to my house. That's my story. Me and Chelsea Carl would die walk home together because she lived not too far from me just down the street and there's this one house this, this big blue house and they always had their dog outside just sitting on the porch and it would always just like as we went by and it was so cute and Chelsea was like I want to go pet it and I'm like you 
can't just go pet strange people's dogs. You know, you just can't go pet strange dogs. I just don't do it. I just don't like it. Um, so she starts petting the dog, and all of a sudden the dog, like, turns on her and starts, like, just snaps at her and chases us all the way back to my house, which, sure, was only, like, half a block away, if that. But still, when you're 12, it's scary to have a dog chase you down the street. And I have also a chase scene. <laughs> my brother and my uncle and I were all in Mexico. Um, they live in Arizona, my uncle and his, aunt, and his wife live in Arizona. And we were visiting them. We went to Mexico to do some shopping on the border. And um, I was looking at a necklace. And uh, this big Mexican guy was selling the necklaces. And um, <clears throat> I decided I didn't want it. No use because I'm getting kind of freaked out. And um, he followed us almost all the way back to the border. It was like screaming words in Spanish at us. And it was scary. <clears throat> That's my story. <laughs> okay, Colin, have you made your decision on which story you think is false? I think so. Um, Why don't you make a statement, which <coughs> one do you believe is false? I believe that Kelsey's is false. Garrett, was your story true? Mm -hmm. Kelsey, was your story true? No. Ooh. That means Colin has won himself an exemption, no money goes in the pot. Sorry guys. I still thought I had a good story. I thought I was totally like, oh yeah. We, we all thought we all sounded realistic and convincing, but I guess mine just wasn't crazy enough or something because Colin picked me up because he thinks I like animals. And I'm okay with animals. Greatest animal person. With the, um, the storytelling, is that Colin picked out that lie so fast to get that exemption. Um, I want to say that I'm angry, but I'm really not. <laughs> because Colin's a cool kid and he deserved it because I thought Kelsey was a pretty good liar. So... It's now time for the counter's task to begin. Two large bowls are brought out. In one bowl are over 700 tiny river rocks mixed in with maple syrup and flour. In the other bowl, tiny foam pellets mixed in with jello. It will be up to the four counters to count how many pellets and how many rocks are in each bowl. Each correct answer will add $2 to the pot. You cannot leave this matted area, nothing can come off of it. And um, you need to be within five, above, or below what the actual number is in order to win. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, I can do this. Okay, okay, go. You guys have ten minutes. You guys frustrated yet? No. Not yet? Maybe we can bring something out to uh, um, maybe frustrate you a little bit. Can you come on out? I'm at 275 too, that's ridiculous. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Oh. Do it. Oh, okay. That's um, really good. Was that 242? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start swearing so much. Ew!